Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be explaining V8 engines. Now if you haven't already checked out my video on engine balancing, you may want to do that first. So I will include a link in the description. Now, V8 engines, what do we have going on? So this is what it's going to look like looking down uh, at the V8. Um, and then the cylinder numbering is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, and basically because these are kind of staggered, so uh, directionally if you were to move all these in the center, it would kind of line up so that that would be the order that you look at them uh, in a straight line. Now, average firing interval we know from our engine balance video, that's equal to the number of strokes multiplied by 180 degrees divided by the number of cylinders. 720 divided by 8 equals 90 degrees. So 90 degrees, that means our piston, we want a piston to fire, or, or a cylinder to fire every 90 degrees of crankshaft rotation. So that'll also be beneficial uh, in setting up the layout of the engine. So it's going to be a 90 degree V8 to compensate for this 90 degree offset of the firing interval. Now, the firing order, um, in this case, I'm going to be talking about a cross-plane V8, um, and I'm going to get more into detail on that uh, in a later video, but basically, firing interval for this is going to be 1, 8, 4, 3, uh, 6, 5, and then 2, 7. So, uh, this is basically what it's going to look like. You're going to have a 90 degree uh, V8 engine here. Um, and so, one of the things is we need to balance out these primary forces. Uh, in this V8 engine. So the way we do that is with uh, this counterweight here which is attached to the crankshaft. So here we've got our engine in uh, four different 90 degree rotations of the crankshaft. So here we're going to be starting with this left cylinder. This will be for example cylinder number two at top dead center. And so that cylinder is going to be at top dead center while this one is on its way up. And so this is rotating uh, in this direction clockwise. And so as this rotates, um, basically when it hits this bottom point here, it's going to negate this force here. So both of these are going to have outward forces. Those are going to cancel out. That's going to get rid of that primary uh, engine imbalance. Now as it continues to rotate, if you had a single cylinder engine, you just would be countering uh, that up and down motion. And the great thing about a V is when you have that uh, crankshaft rotated another 90 degrees, there's another piston at that 90 degree angle to counteract that motion. So as this crankshaft rotates this way, it's going to throw a force in this direction. Well, it just so happens that your other piston uh, is at top dead center at that point. So those forces are going to cancel each other out. Now your other piston is going to be moving down at this point. So as this rotates another 90 degrees, that piston continues to move down until it reaches bottom dead center, and then your counterweight has rotated towards it. So now those two forces cancel each other out, uh, and you've balanced your primary forces. And then finally, this rotates one more uh, set of 90 degrees, and then your other cylinder, which was already on, the other piston was already on its way down, now reaches bottom dead center, and those two forces cancel each other out. And then it just repeats itself back up here, and you go through this loop. Now a V8 is essentially four of these little two-cylinder devices here uh, matched together. So these two pistons are on a common crank pin. So that means both of these uh, connecting rods are connecting to basically the same area. It's just offset a little bit of where that crankshaft is. Now, this differs depending on the crankshaft if it's a cross plane or flat plane. And I'm going to make a separate video because there's very distinct differences between these two types of crankshafts uh, and V8 engines. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of a V8 engine. Well, one of the biggest advantages is the packaging size. If you were to think about an inline eight-cylinder engine, it'd be extraordinarily long and it'd be kind of uh, fairly unrigid. Um, and so the packaging size of this V8, when you match all eight cylinders to this smaller, uh, more compact crankshaft, um, it's a much more compact size, uh, and that's a great thing for fitting it inside of a car. Also, depending on the crank type, if it is a cross-plane, uh, you can have a, a good crank balance, a good balance of the engine. Um, greater displacement, of course, if you've got eight cylinders versus a traditional four cylinder, they're kind of limited by the engine balance, so you can have larger engines. Um, and also this, this engine, it's very compact, and uh, in creating that, it's also very rigid. So that's another big benefit of a V8 versus an inline engine. Disadvantages. Well, the center of gravity is still fairly high compared to a flat engine or boxer engine. Uh, the complexity is high because you've got these two valve trains, two cylinder heads, uh, you've got all of the added components and friction and inertia with doubling everything there. Um, the balance of a flat plane crankshaft 
is not that great. Um, there are some benefits and some downside, but basically the secondary balance for a flat plane is not that good. I will get into more detail. Um, and then you're going to have a heavier crankshaft with a cross plane V8 because you're going to be adding this counterweight in order to compensate for the primary forces. So thank you for watching, and as I mentioned, I will have a future video on cross plane versus flat plane, uh, which will go into more detail. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.